Set string is pretty easy to use, actually. Okay. So now we've set up these two strings. And we've set up a way to parse our XM strings. So let's use that in here. Let's actually now grab. the file path. So our file selection box value is going to be the XM string converted of the F type ref. And we have our file selection box callback struct. We want to get the value out of it. But we want to take that from the data. All right, there we go. So that'll let us get a string of the path. And all we have to do now is use it. But before we use it, we also need to be able um, to get the constants that we haven't had. So that's going to require us to add a couple of things in here. Specifically, here set text work. And the output all. So let's look at that. All right, there we go. Okay, so now we have those constants, but let's actually make sure that those are defined. Let's define constant value let's pass it a string and it will give us back some function Let's do XM care set text. And yeah, for all. Okay, so we've defined those functions. And here's our good old file handler. So now we need to be able to read and write to our edit text. So let's actually write a couple of helpers to let us get access to that. So let's get the uh, buffer text and that should just be converting our text string and setting the buffer text 
should be almost as easy. Like so. Alright. So now we can get and set our buffer text from our little uh, widget. So we can go ahead and set the pads up now where previously we may not have known what the pad was. Like so. And we can use that to do our work. So on an open system, we want to set the buffer text to everything we can find from the incoming input. Like so, and when we get the output, or when we need to save the file, I need to actually put a string, and we need to take all of that buffer text. and store it in the file. Now we're not going to prompt uh, for overwriting existing files, so that would be uh, another dialog to pop up and you would naturally uh, throw in a little bit more code to do that if you wanted that functionality. Okay, so now we have our full-on file widget, so let's see what we get. Let's open a file. All right, there we go. We can take this file and say we can maybe delete a bit of it. Now let's save it. Let's save it into something else. And you'll notice that our status message also updated appropriately. And it seems to have worked here. So let's open a different file here. And let's try reopening our old file and seeing if it was right. There we go. Now we have our new, um, our correctly saved and open file. And there you have it. We now have a fully working, fully functional text editor. Or, I mean, <laughs> roughly equivalent to something like, say, Notepad or similar. So we can open and save files, we can exit, copy and paste, and we can learn a little bit about what the editor does. So the only thing left to do is package this up as a real executable. So let's pull up Scheme and we can make a boot file out of this and say demo.boot. And then so now we have a boot file here called demo.boot. And if we run petite on that, it will launch our application just like any other application. And with a little bit, and um, if we installed this uh, like you would normally install a Shea Scheme application, you will 
to be able to work with it just by calling demo, like any other regular GUI desktop application. And yet, all of our code was written in Scheme. We did very little, if any, real programming on the C side of things. We did do a bit of work to make sure that our code was glued together appropriately in our C code, but that includes basically a couple of declarations, some helper files, and then some trivial wrappers around our callbacks. All very simple, easy. And the rest of this code has all been generated automatically by our GUI editor. So to give you an idea, we wrote around maybe 300 lines of code here, whereas the total application size for this system is around 5,000 lines of code. The BXUtils, some of those are not used, so if we take that out, we're looking at about a thousand lines of code. Where we can say that the GUI builder took out at least roughly a third or, or two thirds or more of our work. And yet we've remained in a fairly high level state for doing our logic. So there's the conclusion that ends this demo. I hope you've all enjoyed it. If you have any questions, don't uh, hesitate to contact me. And I will be posting this code up somewhere at some point. Thank you.